Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channel Television. A quick reminder of our top stories now. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo asked Nigerian youths to hold their leaders to account and prevent the citizens' commonwealth from being flitted away. 32 suspects arrested in connection with the violence that rocked Kaduna as state government steps up efforts, efforts to bring normalcy to the affected areas. Nigeria's health sector gets a boost as the federal government secures a $660 million deal from Global Fund to tackle critical health challenges. And at least 11 people now confirmed killed as gunmen opened fire at the synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the United States. ChannelCV.com has more information for you and on YouTube.com forward slash channels where you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channel CV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from your respective stores. Besides giving you access to news and updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app have an eyewitness feature that you can use to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. As part of efforts to deal with insecurity in the country, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukurburate, is assuring Nigerians that the Army is working towards being self-reliant in the production of combat vehicles by the year 2025. The Army Chief, who is speaking at the passing out parade of 77 regular recruits in Zaria, Kaduna State, explains that the new intakes will assuage the manpower needs of the Nigerian Army. It's the passing out parade of the 77 regular recruits intake at the depot, Nigeria Army in Zaria, Kaduna State. The Chief of Army Staff inspects the parade, accompanied by the Commandant of the depot, Nigeria Army, Major General Victor Ezugu. And then a march passed and silent drill by the graduating students after the presentation of a banner to the champion company. <laughs> after witnessing the combat march and physical training display, the chief of army staff restates his commitment to supporting the depot and the provision of trained manpower for the army. I therefore wish to assure the Depot Nigerian Army of my continuous commitment and support towards improving the standard of training, welfare of recruits, officers and soldiers, as well as the staff. Suffice to say that the Depot Nigerian Army is very dear to my heart and will continue to receive the needed logistics to sustain its activities. He then reveals the Army's plan towards attaining self-reliance in aspects of its operations. Let me at this juncture command, commend the Commandant and his team for the uncommon research and development feat which led to the production of the five patrol vehicles named TYB Rover in my, over, in my honor. By this breakthrough, the Nigerian Army is poised to become self-reliant in Class B combat vehicles by the year 2025. The elated recruits look forward to being posted for their primary duties. Also, Nigerians still believe that the insecurity in parts of the country could be better tackled with the decentralization of the police force. One of those who believes that this will solve the problem is the presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress, ADC, and former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Obadia Meilafia. He says that the current structure of the Nigerian police is ineffective. The ADC presidential candidate, who was speaking in Abuja, called for an intelligence-driven policing system, as well as enhanced training for police officers. The idea of an over-centralized police machinery 
in which police are sent to states where they have no understanding of the terrain and the people don't identify with them is a problem. When some of us were growing up in the 60s, we had the Dandoka, the Yendoka of the native authority. They were controlled by the native authority. So, so in the end, we need to equip the police. We need to train the police. In fact, left to me, the training of military and police should be the same. In some countries, it is the same training. It is just that in the end, when it comes to the service, everybody goes to his own service, like Navy, Airway, Air Force, and so on and so forth. So we need police that are well-trained and well-equipped, and also I put emphasis on intelligence and intelligence gathering. That is extremely important. Over the last few years, there have been renewed efforts to change the fortunes of the Nigerian airports through remodeling and new constructions. With the recent opening of one of four of the uh, China Exim Bank's $500 million loan facilitated terminals in Nigeria, the ultimate aim is to ensure that infrastructure capacity impacts on safety. Our aviation correspondent Bukala Joe Ketumbi now reports. An airport is an aerodrome with facilities, mostly for commercial air transport. It also consists of an aerially accessible open space with one operationally active surface, such as a runway for a plane to take off and land. In Nigeria, there are about 30 airports with 22 operated by the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria and some privately owned. One quality an airport must have is the ease of traveling through. It's not enough to have an airport. The airport must be functional. The airport must be seen to be, um, how would I say, facilitating passenger movement, all the formalities, so to say. It must also be an airport that has the ambience that welcomes you. Next step is to provide necessary equipment that are required be it X-ray machine for security or the necessary security requirements, security um, scanning machines, or even to automation of different passenger facilitation tools. In time past, most Nigerian airports had experienced some form of degradation. In a bid to upgrade some of the airport infrastructure in the country, the federal government in 2013 took a $500 million loan facility from the China Exim Bank to put up four new terminals in Lagos, Abuja, Kano, and Port Harcourt. Just this week, the Port Harcourt terminal was officially opened. According to Nigeria Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan, some $775 billion is required to develop Nigeria's transportation infrastructure over the next 30 years. Nigeria needs to attract quality investment through PVP in order to make our airport world class, profitable, efficient, comfortable, safe, and more importantly, secure. Beyond the provision of new terminals, aviation security is an important part in the scheme in order to prevent any threat or potentially dangerous situations from arising or entering the country. While an airport fire and rescue service is in the mix to save lives in the event of an aircraft accident or incident. The Collard Joe Okitumbi, Channels Television News. Let's get a broader perspective on this. Ifai Oguchuku is a member of the Aviation Roundtable and Industry Pressure Group. He joins us on the News at 10. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming at this time. Thank you. Good evening. Now, upgrades in airports, uh, basically, infrastructure often comes as a hot topic anytime you think about that and when it's being discussed. But now we have these terminals. Uh, one coming, uh, we hear that about three of them, or is it four of them now, are uh, coming on stream. How does this unfold for you? Could you give us an impression? Well, you know, basically over the years for our country, we had airport infrastructure deficit across most of the airports. And of course, airport degradation as well, because lack of lack of maintenance. So for me, it's a welcome development that we're beginning to remodel these airports, particularly the four international airports, Lagos, Abuja, Kenan, and Port Harcourt, to bring it to, well, global standards. But again, the terminal building actually is not just the infrastructure. The key thing actually is the equipment inside the terminal building. That actually determines how good that airport infrastructure is. Mm -hmm. So again, we need to look at what's available inside, inside the terminal building. I mean, like I said earlier on, the issue of 
product that's coming on stream now is a welcome development because it's been a long time coming and all that. How, how much uh, does infrastructure weigh on safety in your view? Well, the thing about, um, quite interesting about safety is the fact that a lot of factors actually enable safety in an airport environment. So basically, you look at the runway, look at the fire cover, the aircraft rescue and firefighting equipment, look at the runway lighting as well, because these are all safety you know, components that makes an airport what it is. Of course, I mean, you look at safety, you look at security as well. But basically, in terms of safety, the fire cover is critical, because you never know when any, any, any accident or incident can happen. So that's, that's one. The, the runways must be up to standard. The, the airfield lighting equipment also must be functional according to the type of airport as well. So those are critical things that has to be available in the airport. You know, when you talk about safety. Again, looking at safety again in the aviation environment, it's not just about the airport infrastructure. I mean, all of the domains of aviation, the aircraft domain, the air navigation system domain, the regulatory environment, the airport domain, the, the airline domain, they all add up because they all have, in the, in the safety chain, they all have roles to play and all that. So all of them are going to get together actually make safety of aviation possible. Now, it has to be an integrated collaborative approach. They can't work in silos. It has to be connected because that's, that's how you can actually really enhance safety within the aviation environment. How do we get to that point, for instance, when you have to do a comparative analysis with what we have at home and uh, what you have to compare with other climbs in Beijing, for instance, in uh, Heathrow Airport in the UK? and uh, even in Dubai. When you move into those airports, you have a sense of some level of, um, of organization that's just breathtaking. When do we get to that point? Well, again, part of what we need to start from actually is our policies, government policies the way airports are run, because most of our airports actually are not friendly, they're hostile, even to passengers. The way passengers are treated at the airports in Nigeria and all that, it's, it's, not, it's not friendly, it's, it's not hospitable to passengers. So we need, to we need to have a different narrative when it comes to that. The airport should be welcoming to passengers, you know, because we keep talking about the fact that Nigeria needs to be a hub. I mean, Lagos needs to be a hub for West Africa and all of that. But you can't have a hub airport when the airport is not friendly, it's not accommodating and all that, which basically means that we need to have policies that will ensure that that airport is friendly. We need to also have good for the airport infrastructure. We need to have good charges. We need to have affordable aviation fuel. All of this adds up together to attract airlines, passengers to that particular airport facility. With all of this being in place, I mean, what you're talking about, about different airports, they have this in place. I mean, they're attractive. So that's why people actually, they have, they, some of them actually have hot positions and all that. But we must make this happen in Nigeria because it's not, it's not rocket science. Nigeria is part of the global aviation community. So we can learn from what other people have done and bring domesticated here and make it work for us. I must thank you so much indeed for talking to us. Ifanya Ogochuku, a member of the Aviation Roundtable and Industry Pressure Group. Thank you so much indeed thank for talking to us here on the News thanks. at 10. When the News at 10 returns, the Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibe Kachuku, woos investors in the US, says that $30 billion deficit waits to be exploited in Nigeria's oil and gas sector. That's on business news. Join us again.